I have a few questions before we wrap up, but I think, you know, I mentioned earlier today that the past 18 months have been this watershed moment in time for, for women around talking about inequities uh, with a new sense of urgency and, and commitment and the like, which has been good and that they're bringing it to the surface. You two represent different generations and different vantage points around these issues. And even the word Priyanka, you, you call yourself a feminist. You've, you, you, you embrace that term. Uh, I would love for you to each sort of talk about how you think about what's, what's going on um, and, and that notion of feminism, feminism today and, and also you know, how it's evolved over the course of, of your career. I'll start with you, Priyanka. Um, I, I think growing up was conflicted about feminism. I didn't understand what the word meant, like a lot of us don't still. It took me a little time to understand what it means. Now, feminism is different to everyone. To me, what feminism stands for is give me the ability to make my own decisions without judging me. Just the same kind of freedom men have had for such a long time. Women should sound like this. Women should wear this. Women at this point should get married. We're always told what we should do we need to be able to decide what we should do, whatever that is. So to me, that freedom is feminism. Thank you. Second, I really, I think that, I, I think that growing up, the one thing that I, looking back now, what I realized was for such a long time, we've always been told as women that the best one will get the boy or the best one will get the job. And we sort of are, have been conditioned to push each other out of the way so that we can be the better one. And if we empower another woman, right? If I empower a woman who's sitting next to me, I might lose the opportunity. It's conditioning. And we've been conditioned to be that way. This is the first time in a very long time, at least in the, my lifetime, that I have seen women embracing each other, women empowering each other, women standing up for each other. And that is such a critical time. When women fought before us, generations before us, for us to have the ability to vote, we don't even think about it today sitting in this room. Think about what all they went through. So what we're doing today is we're, we're seeding the thought for your daughters, for your, for my daughter's daughters, for kids who will not have to think about the gender disparity. They'll not have to think about like how it feels to be a woman who's marginalized or, or what it feels like to be, um, to be traumatized by men in power. They won't have to think about it because we will create a world where men are afraid to do that. We will create a world together where we stand by each other and say, nope, I'm sorry, you're not doing this to my daughter because you did it to me and that's enough. And that is such a powerful time to be a woman. And, and, and you have that unique vantage point, right? Um, generationally and, 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 and given the world that, that you're in and that th this amazing perspective to see the opportunity that exists. Indra, given your career, uh, how, how do you approach this conversation and, and what Priyanka mentioned and, and the optimism um, that we all have in terms of being able to, to move the m momentum forward? You know, I look at the next couple of decades and say it's a decade of women. Because if I look at college degrees, women are getting it in larger numbers than men. If I look at the top grades, more women are getting the top grades than the men. So if you really want to run a successful company, you have to recruit the best and the brightest, i.e. bring the women into the company. So we have to create new companies, new environments to make women thrive. Uh, because if you hire them and then they leave you, it's more expensive than not hiring them in the first place. So I'm a firm believer that the next couple of decades are the decades of women when it comes to working. But you can't put all the onus on women. We have to create the uh, support structures to allow them to balance the different roles they have to play. Because there are some roles you cannot delegate to men. We have to do it ourselves. And so I think it behooves companies to help women achieve their goals. And to Priyanka's point, I think we have to have our own sisterhood. You know, I've been telling the story recently. Uh, about three months ago, on my HBO popped up uh, an episode of Sex and the City. I never watched it. So you're I sort of out. fell in love with the out, first Indra. episode, and I watched all 94 episodes. I binge watched it. <laughs> I binge watched it. 
Did and I have to tell did your you husband watch it with you. Was what? it one of the? Did your husband watch no, no, it with no, you? No, no, no. Was it one of the shared chance. activities? No. The the great thing about that show is because there's so many scenes that focus on the first word as opposed to the other three words. You can fast forward, <laughs> which is what I did. So, but I loved the show. Why did I love the show? Every episode had a lesson, uh, an interesting thing to think about. But the biggest takeaway was the sisterhood of those four women: Carrie, Charlotte. Miranda and uh, who was the fourth one? Yeah. Samantha. <laughs> My God, the sisterhood they had was fantastic. What happened to us? Why don't we have a sisterhood? Somebody shutting off my mic because you always <laughs> talk about. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, what happened to our sisterhood? Why don't we have our own sisterhood? I think the more I looked at that show, I said, man, we have to create our own sisterhoods. We have to have our own safe spot where we can talk about our issues. Because you can't talk about it at home. Because nobody wants to hear you talk about your work problems at home. We need our sisterhood. We need an environment where our sisterhood does not judge us, but gives us constructive feedback, where we can talk about Mr. Big in a you know, comfortable place. You know what I mean? <laughs> For those of you who have seen the show. <laughs> but I have to tell you, that show profoundly altered my thinking only because I didn't think about the show and the fashions, which were awesome, but really about what was behind the covers, the sisterhood of women. So the only way we are going to be able to balance everything going forward is if we don't do what Priyanka talked about, worry that the person next to us, the woman next to us is going to take away our future potential because the next level is going to have fewer women because they have a quota for women or whatever. Yeah. Rather say, let's pull us all Let's put ourselves each other. And that sisterhood needs to form. And when we get there, I think there's no stopping us. I love that so. sentiment. I love that. Well, I, uh, I, have, I have two questions to, um, to, to wrap up uh, before, uh, before we finish the conversation. Each of you have broken barriers. Each of you serve as incredible role models around the world. I would love for... for each of you to reflect on what, what, the other, what the other woman on the stage represents in terms of, of opportunities for women. Um, Priyanka, how do you see the work that Indra has done uh, as a role model for your generation uh, and, and what it means? And Indra, I would ask the same question to you. I mean, there's really the one similarity between both Indra and I are we come from small towns and we had big dreams. And we didn't let anything else define that. And that's why she's someone I'm a huge fan of, not because, you know, she's <laughs> she's the boss lady of how many employees, you said? Two hundred, how many? 260? What? How many employees for PepsiCo? 260,000. Yeah, just yeah. about. Just a few. I want to I be the <laughs> boss lady billion, for that many you know. employees. Yeah. But mm -hmm. um, not because of that, but because of what she stands for as a woman. She's a proud woman who's an achiever, who... That, and that, but that doesn't define her when she walks into a room. She doesn't walk into a room like a lot of male CEOs do, you know, where you can tell by the sniff of their cologne how 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 much of a CEO they are. Um, <laughs> and the hair gel, and yeah, the hair gel and the too. the gel and the suit. Yeah. But Indra walks in, like she said, not just because of her brains, but for me as 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 a girl who wants to be the biggest that I can be in whatever field that might be, she stands for integrity. She stands for being so self-assured that it's anything is like water off of a duck's back, you know? She has this grace and charm and humor mm. that she deals her life with. She's a mom, she's a you know daughter, she's a wife, and she does all of that. I mean, I went for lunch at her house and she cooked. <laughs> she cooked, I mean, I can't cook. So I really <laughs> admire that about women. <laughs> And she cooked like from scratch this Indian food and like she's completely wholesome. And I think when I like, as I'm growing up and as I see myself going forward in my life, I would want to be a wholesome woman and that's what I admire her for, is a wholesome woman. And Indra, what would you say, uh, uh, what would you say about Priyanka? I'm smelling my cologne first. <laughs> <laughs> We know she can't cook, so you know you can't. You can't. Uh, you, I gotta. You can't I gotta get that. this cologne. But uh, <laughs> you know, I didn't. I'm saying, you, I don't, you got it. I, I don't think anybody comprehends how big a figure Priyanka is in India. I mean, she's mm -hmm. not normal. She's like awesome. Mm -hmm. uh, when really she walks, normal. when she walks in the street, she'll get mobbed. When she lands in the airport, it's like 
hundreds of people clamoring to see her. She's like hot stuff. And so, uh, you know, the amazing part about Priyanka is not only is she a fabulous actress, a fabulous dancer, a fabulous musician. I'm sure many of you have never seen Bollywood films, but when you see her in one, it is spectacular. So most of her movies are like gross bestsellers. They just grow so much money. But in addition to all of that, she's not one of these vacant uh, movie stars. She's a person with great intellectual um, background. She's a person with enormous brains, aeronautical engineer who became an actress. I mean, that's not that's simple those stuff. Those are usually not in the same sentence, and, right? And yeah, yeah. she's worried about humanitarian causes, social causes, is always coming forward to help people in need. So I think uh, she represents one of the most progressive arms of moviedom, if you want to call it that. And uh, if people like Priyanka can lend their name and really lean in on these causes that change society like she's doing, the world will be a better place. So Priyanka, thank you for everything you do. I think she's just awesome. Uh, well, <laughs> well, with that, I think that is a, a, good place, a good place to end. I mean, I think it's thank you to, to both of what you do. Uh, you give hope, you give possibility, uh, you give inspiration to so many. Mm -hmm. And I think it's a great reminder of, you know, I, I love, Ander, when you, you talked about the power of the sisterhood and, uh, and, and, and needing to uh, uh, free ourselves from some of the boxes and constructs that others put us in and have a sense of confidence and self-assurance mm -hmm. um, because within that and in that um, is where real opportunity for, for our strengths to come to play um, happen. So again, I, I want to thank you to two amazing women whose power is extraordinary.